Matt Makins here. In this video, we're going to talk about the mega drought and why the winter outlook is so critically important. In fact, I think this year's winter outlook is one of the most important that we have had in a very, very long time. We have to help the mega drought situation across the West. You might be asking yourself, why does Matt keep saying mega drought? Let's talk about the perspective. Perhaps as you've been surfing around on Google, you see the headlines about the water issues across the West. Not only the drought, but issues with the Colorado River and the water availability. If you think you've heard a lot about these stories now, just wait until next summer should we have a very poor snow season. We're going to hear legal battles about water like you won't believe next summer, and that's due to the drought. My very last video posted was the winter outlook and the thinking behind it from a scientific perspective. Not sensationalized, not hype, what science can show us as a general guidance for the winter outlook. Make sure you subscribe to this video too if you're missing out on some of these videos I've been posting recently, and they're all based in science. Let's get on with it. The current snapshot of the drought picture across the western U.S. Extensive drought coverage. Abnormally dry areas cover roughly two-thirds of the U.S. as of this video. This started about two years ago. We saw the rapid expansion of drought due to this current La Nina that we are in. But if you look at years back to 2000, we've been in drought periods before, notably 2012 and 13, and also around 2002 into 2003 and 4. Over the last 20 years, if you would average out the drought, it's one of the biggest droughts that we have had on our record. How long is this record? We can go back quite a ways, actually. You can study tree rings, sediment cores, corals, those kind of things that garner climate data over the last several thousand years. In this case, tree rings giving us drought numbers. Every bar here on the chart, those are individual moments in time, individual years of drought. Now, we do have the Dust Bowl. It's right here. That period of drought over a short time was the most expansive, most severe drought that we've had going back to 1021. This drought started roughly around the year 2000, 22 years worth of drought data. So present day, if you'd average out every 22 years going back in time, here's a spike right there of a 22 year period, which was more expansive than what we have today. This implies that this current drought a mega drought because it's lasted two decades plus now. This period of drought, this mega drought, you pretty much have to go back into the 1500s, 1400s, all the way back into the early 1100s to find a drought period this long and severe in duration. What do we need to do to break this cycle? What do we need to do to get rid of those Google headlines? We need snow. We need a lot of it. We have to boost our water supply. We just came out of the monsoon period and yet Despite the monsoon, we are still abnormally dry to in a drought across the entire western U.S. Now, the monsoon was great. Don't get me wrong. If you look at the amount of precipitation versus average that fell in June, July, and August, the summer period, a big bullseye there in the southwest. The monsoon did provide valuable rainfall. However, a lot of that rain just washed away. Let's take this a step further. The soil moisture. Look down here in the southwest. These are wetness percentiles and the very low end of the percentiles. But wait, I just showed you that the monsoon brought great rainfall, right? Well in a surplus versus average, but it didn't soak in. We didn't get a lot of soil penetration. So a lot of the Southwest remains with bone dry soil despite recent heavy rain. Look at the monsoon and what it did for the, the vegetation here across the Southwest. Very little. The vegetation is in severe drought or extreme drought conditions despite the monsoon. If you look at water storage, uh, all these reservoirs, well, I shouldn't say all of them, many of them are historically low. So we're running out of water. We have to get water. The monsoon didn't do much. How do you offset that? A very big factor in doing that is snowfall. Get in snow let it slowly melt, slowly get into the soils. And that's something we have not had in quite a while. Now, over the last five years, snowfall in terms of above or below average pre, uh, snowfall in the last five years, not a very positive outlook here for the West. A lot of the basins, California into, into Utah and Colorado, 
largely drier than average. Less snow has fallen in the last five years versus average. Now, there are some highlights. There are some mountains within Colorado, Utah, Nevada, up into California, and certainly up to the northwest that have had beneficial snowfalls, but not enough to offset those areas that didn't get the snow. Is this year's winter outlook going to change much? If you watched my very last video, it is the winter outlook, and I go into detail describing how I came to that forecast. It's a scientific approach, but if you look at the forecast based on those analog gears, and again, the last video describes how that, that process works, we are looking at a, a map very similar to what we've seen the last five years. So five years, and then outlook for this winter drier than average. Less snow will fall this winter across most of those water basins for the Colorado. So that's a mega drought. It's a long-term decadal period of drought. What do we need to offset that drought? A lot of snow. That's why this year's winter outlook is so critical. So next summer, when we're looking on Google, we really need my outlook to totally bust. And I'm okay with that because that means a lot of snow has fallen and that will help the drought situation and the water situation. Anyway, that's a mega drought in a nutshell from a scientific perspective and gave you a little historic reasoning behind it as well. I'm Matt Makins. We'll see you the next time.